Good movie, second service. Hopefully this, uh, this first area fills up today because everybody's all heavy on that side. Are we going to be leaving here? Welcome to Grace Church this morning. Hope you guys are excited to praise and worship this morning. First service was awesome. You know, we praise God to, no matter what's happening in our lives, right? Through the, high, the mountains, through the valleys. We're going to sing about that this morning. I won't be quiet. 
Father, we ask for your presence just to be poured out this morning. And your spirit just to rest on us this morning. Sing it up. 
That's a speedy
you, Rob, we want this morning to be here. Father, just your presence to be poured out, Father. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child
Lord of God. Lord of God. Come on, come on, church. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Cause I'm no Hallelujah, hallelujah. If God is for us, who cares what's against us? You've been dealing with fear. You know, we were singing, just walk right through it. God's already split it open. God's already made a path. You, you got to walk through that. You just got to walk through there. Just start walking through it. Amen. Just start walking through it. I wanna, and all of you that came up, just start walking through it. Just start walking through it. Just start walking. Somebody, somebody there is standing there. You gotta walk through it too. Come on, don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Glory to God. You gotta walk through it. Glory to God. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Lord. good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So if you have your bread, just take your bread. You know, we're blessed. The Bible says that do this in the remembrance of me. Jesus said that. And as we do it, we're partaking, knowing that by his stripes, we are healed. And if there's something ailing in your body right now, say, thank you, Lord. Healing belongs to me. I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, Father God. And I thank you for my healing. And as I partake, I remember of you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Healing is in your body. It belongs to you. And Father, we thank you for the precious blood, Lord God. Oh, yes, that cleansed us, made us white as snow, Lord God. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, because our own righteousness is not enough, Father God, for what you did for us, Lord God. We are only righteous because you made us righteous, Lord God. So we thank you, Father God, that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace, Father God. Come before you because of the precious blood of Jesus. And we do this in remembrance of you. Go ahead. Amen, amen. Go ahead and greet someone and let them know, yes, you are a child of God. Welcome. How exciting. This service looks excited. Excited to be here. Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of all the pastors here at Grace Church, we want to welcome you. If there's any first time visitors, we want to say thank you for coming to Grace Church. And if you're looking for a church, you just found one. Amen. Well, just real quickly, I want to just let you know what's going on. If you all grabbed a calendar while coming in, we do have a new look for our February calendars. And going on, we're going to be having some new uh, calendars here. It's a really nice one, too. If you look at it, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and I believe the new one also is on Facebook. I think Facebook and Instagram, and then the other one is, what is it? YouTube, I'm sorry, YouTube. And then there's also a little quiz for you to read on there. And then there's a challenge question here to read uh, 1 Corinthians every day for a month in chapter 13, the love chapter. And then it gives you all the details of what's taking place for this month. Uh, on February the 4th, we have su on Sunday at 8 o'clock, we have GTR meeting for the teachers and helpers only for the children's. Uh, so make sure if you're a children's helper and teacher for the children's, you're going to have a meeting, and it's going to be at 8 a.m. on February 4th. And that also reminds me that on the 10th, you also, the, the nursery workers, anybody that works in the nursery department or helpers, you're also going to have a meeting at 8 a.m. here at the church in the youth building. And that's also for all the nursery workers and helpers on the 10th, okay? And then again, on the 31st, which is Wednesday, we have young adults at 7 p.m. Young adults, how many young adults do we have? Amen. Come on now, at 7 p.m. So that's going on there. And then on Friday, G1 Youth at 7 p.m. Amen? Do we have youth in the house? <laughs> Amen. Lalo goes like this. Yeah, amen. And then in the kitchen today, we're selling bacon and egg chorizo and eggs, chorizo and potatoes for $3. Amen. amen. So that's it for announcements. We want to go ahead and call, before we call Pastor John, we're going to call up Sister Bertha. She's got something to say. Women of Grace, where are you? 
Pick your hands up and give yourself a shake because we are having the continue. The Grace Church of Women is going to continue. Pastor Ruby brought a great message yesterday on fear and becoming fearless. Should have listened to the song. She wouldn't have had to given us a message. This, yeah, yeah, that was perfect in what she shared. She gave us five very important reasons of why we have fear. We're all independent. We all different. Fear might be different for Catherine than it is for me, and so forth. But she gave us how we can get out of fear. So basically, it was very intimate. It was very, very, very good message. And she took it up to the last minute. So women, I encourage you to come be with us this coming month. You will enjoy it, and you will grow from it. We are women. We're different than men. Men wear the armor. They're strong. We are women. We're spiritually built different, physically. But you can see us go from zero to 60. So women, carry that word. Amen. And you know what? We're spiritually strong, too. Amen. Pastor John, with tithes and offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, yes, uh, if anyone needs an envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will hand you one. But I do have uh, one more announcement, one more announcement. Um, if anyone is interested in being a driver for Gracie, if you don't know who Gracie is, Gracie is our, um, our, our golf cart. I was going to say go-kart. Everybody's going to want to drive the go-kart. Our, our golf, golf cart. And so we need drivers. And, and if you do sign up, we'd really like you to be able to do for both services and work out the best. You'd only have to do it like once a month. So we really do need Gracie drivers. Amen. I mean, the, if you haven't seen the golf cart, it's all pimped out. It's ready to go. Amen. So you'll look really cool driving it. Amen. So we need. And if you do want to do it, you say, hey, I can get I can do one Sunday a month. Let me know. Come and speak to me, amen, because I'm going to be making the calendars for it, and so I'll put you down, amen? So it's a good thing, you know, uh, uh, you know it's, it's, you, you're going to take everybody, you start learning how to, the scenic routes and taking all the way around and go, no, nah, I'm just kidding. We just go to the parking lot, we come back, parking lot, and come back, amen? Amen. So for those of you that don't know, that we still park uh, many of the vehicles at the school so we can have room for uh, parking here, amen? So it's a great help. So everybody had enough time to fill up their envelope, raise it up to the Lord, let's pray over it, believe God, you know your needs in your home, pray over them, amen? Believe God, trust God, amen? No fear, glory to God, God's gonna make a way. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're a good and faithful God, Lord. We thank you, Father God that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father God, I thank you that all the needs are met here in the church, met in their homes, Lord God, that they have more than enough to give unto every good work, Lord God. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen, amen. amen. God bless you as you give. One on. I'm going to use this one first. Amen. Well, it's good to see you. We turned the ACs uh, on, so it's going to cool down in just a second, all right? We realized we didn't have it on where it should be on, so it should cool down. It's good to see everybody, and if you're, you've been visiting, this is your first time, here. welcome to Grace Church. I'm Pastor Manuel. Yeah. So excited to see you in the house. Um, before I have my message, I wanted, I felt led to, to sing a song. Uh, those of you that don't know, I, I write music, been writing music for a long time. And I have a website called mcmidable.com. It's all free. You can download it. There's like five, six albums on there with my music that I've written over the years since the early 90s. Uh, even my first cassette one that I did. It was <laughs> anyway, so I grew up in the 60s, 70s. So I, I, one of these CDs is called uh, Streets of Gold. It kind of has an oldies feel to it. It's going to have like a little oldies vibe to it and so forth. So if you like music, it's free. You can download it. I even use it for witnessing. If somebody, I see somebody say, hey, you like music? You like, you know, I got some Christian music you can listen to. It's free. I just, I send it to my website and they can listen to the whole album, download, whatever. So take advantage of it. I think they put it up here sometimes. But anyway, I'm going to sing one song from this album, 2003, that I did this uh, called uh, Turn My Life Around. And it's based on that. I'm going to switch over now to the other one.
All right, let's see, go ahead. that for me back in 1982. Young whippersnapper of 20 years old. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. voice that's 70s right there okay that's 70s amen in the 70s you know remember the 70s they had the Bee Gees <laughs> what do you remember what do you remember stay in life remember that that's 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 why your album has that kind of stuff the 70s I couldn't get it out of me anyway praise God let me turn over amen I love 
I love the music in the 60s and the 70s. At least we understood it. Come on now. At least we understood the music. Amen. And then the 50s was kind of just a fun. Bop, body, be bop, bam, bam, boom, bidi, bing, bam, you know. <laughs> be bop. <laughs> Amen. Listen, you ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. Listen, I have a, a good word to share with you this morning. It's, it's based out of Hebrews chapter 11. You know, we had been talking about a, a running a race. And the, we all, God has a race for each and every one of us to run. We've been talking about that. But today I want to I start going in a, a, a direction and kind of show you of how Moses ran his race and what we can learn from the race that was set before Moses. Like I've said, everyone has a race to run. God has a journey and a race for each and every one of our lives. And so, and so he has set something before us. Now, Pastor, what is that? Well, you have, that's why it's important for you to seek God to guide you and give you direction which way to go. You may not understand where you're going or, or, and so forth, but that's why you seek the Lord, to find direction of where he wants you to go. But I'm going to tell you something. God has a race for each and every one of us. Amen? But like I was talking before, there's things that can happen in our life that will discourage us or get us weary from running our race. Amen? Just like a runner in a marathon, he could get weary from running that race. But how many know they have what? They have stations, break stations, where you can get water, or I said Snickers or whatever you want, to, whatever satisfies you, but <laughs> Snickers or whatever, and uh, amen? And, uh, and, 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 and then what? Peanut butter? Something like, yeah, peanut butter or something. But anyway, what is it for? It's to strengthen your body so you can keep running your race. But the scripture shows us in Hebrews chapter 12 that, you know, keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Consider him when you're going through a tough time. Why? Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Where can you become weary and discouraged? In your souls, your mind, your will and emotions. So if we're going to quit running a race for God, it, in fact, there's people that give up on life. They want to commit suicide. And, and, you know, again, why? They get weary. They get discouraged. But listen, that's why you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the author. He's the one that started your race in life, and he's the one that's going to finish it. But you've got to keep your eyes on him. Don't get distracted. Just like the marathon runner, he's focusing on the what? The gold medal. So when, it, when, his, flesh, when his legs are getting tired or whatever, what motivates him? He's thinking about, man, I'm going to win the prize. Amen. I'm one of the, or the swimmer, I'm going to win the gold medal for it, right? So you see what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says. Keep your eyes on him. So we've talked about that, but today I want to talk about what can we learn from the race set before Moses. So we're kind of backing up from chapter 12 to ch chapter 11, and let's look at the life of Moses and the race that he ran. So look at verse 23 of Hebrews. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of, his com of the king's command. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we get into your word, thank you for the Holy Spirit giving me revelation, knowledge, truth to share your word. And also, Father, give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying through your word, that we can learn these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So notice the first thing we notice here in verse 23. Moses' parents walked by faith. How? In the race that was set before him. What? Their calling was to have this child, Moses. And the king was saying, destroy every firstborn child. So what did mom and dad do? They didn't listen to the king. And thank God they didn't listen to him. And by faith, they had a plan where, you know, the daughter of Pharaoh can, can what, take care, of a, take care of the baby. Amen? Why? Because they saw that the, one translation saw that he was a special, unique child. So they sent something on this baby, a call or anointing they saw on this baby. And so thank God the parents saved them. Otherwise, Moses would not have been born. I mean, he would not have been uh, alive any further. Are you seeing that? So, but look at, if those of you that got your notes, no, uh, number one, it's fill in the blank. So fill in the blank in your notes. So notice the first thing we learn, and we're going to read it from verse 24. If you want to go to verse, uh, let's go to verse 24, Hebrews 11. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So notice the first thing we notice. When he became older, he, 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 he was 40 years old, and he realized, I'm sure he got to find out either through his mom or whatever, that he was an Israelite and not an Egyptian. So he had to make a choice. Am I going to go with my true identity, or am I going to go with the identity the world has for me? And so Moses, so write this down on your notes, number one. By faith he what? He chose his true identity. 
If you're going to run this race that God has before you, you need to find out who you are in Christ. You need to find out your own identity. Amen? Now here, in order to do God's will for his life, Moses had to identify with who he really was, not with what the world identified him with. Now think about it. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the whatever temple or whatever they had there in the kingdom. And so he was raised up in the ways of the world. Egypt is a picture of the world. And so he was raised up in the ways of the world, knew the languages, I'm sure, and he was being set up to be the next Pharaoh. Amen? Right? And then the Lord showed up, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, oh let my people go. Right? Remember that song? <laughs> right? And so, and so he was set up, but, but God, notice, but God had another plan for Moses. But listen, he had to identify and you, how many know, when you identify with the, what, the people of God, he refused to be called what? He didn't want to be called part of the uh, of, of Pharaoh and his kingdom, but he wanted to identify with the people of God. So li likewise, we need to stop identifying what? With the world. Right? We need to stop. I our identity, if you've received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are no longer part of this world. You may be in the world, but you're not of the world. See, you're in the world, but the world doesn't have to affect you. The world doesn't have to be your, your master. You're, you're a new, what does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become what? New. Amen? So notice, we identify when we come to Jesus, amen, our old life is gone. Our old ways are gone. We, don't, we stop identifying who we are. Because why? If you still think you're an alcoholic, but saved, but, but you're, if you still identify as being an alcoholic, guess what? You'll still live that way. You may have been an alcoholic, but when you receive Jesus, you're no longer an alcoholic. You're a new creation in Christ. You may have been into drug or drug addict or whatever, but when you receive Jesus, you're, you're, you're no longer loco. You are a new creation in Christ. Amen. I used to be a chocoholic. Amen? But I got saved, and no, I'm no longer a chocoholic. Amen? Moderation, people, moderation. Amen? You see what I'm saying? So you, you have to what? You have, don't identify with the world. See, the world will throw labels at you. Oh, you were, you're abused. Come on. You were molested. You were this, you're that. Don't listen to those labels. If you're, a, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. See yourself that way. In fact, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I don't know how many times I've quoted it in my life. If I'm being tempted or going through something, notice. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us what? What did Jesus become for us? He's our what? Wisdom from God. Well, I, Pastor, I don't know anything. You don't? Well, guess what? You don't understand Jesus is your wisdom. So if you got Jesus, you are smart. Amen. You're a smart cookie if you got Jesus. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs that heaven thinks you're smart. It says the beginning of wisdom is the worshipful fear of the Lord. So heaven knows you're smart when you begin worshiping God. That's when heaven notices, oh, they're getting smart. They're coming to church. They're worshiping God. Now they're finally getting smart. They were stupid, but now they're smart. Stupid is, stupid does. No, now you're smart. Smart is, smart is. Amen. And so, see what I'm saying? And so, isn't it something? So you identify. So Jesus is what? Go back to that scripture. He's wisdom from God. What else is he? He's our righteousness. See, it's no longer, you're, you're right with God, not because of what you do. You're right with God because of what he did. God imputed or gave you his righteousness when you received Jesus. Right? So you're right with God because of what he did. Amen? Now, now, can you begin to walk a more righteous life? Yes, a holy life. Yes, but again, really, it's really his life. Notice the next one, holiness. That word a sanctification is, means to be set apart or to be made holy. So what are you here? Jesus is your wisdom. What else? Your righteousness. What else? Your sanctification. If you want to put that scripture back up, Sally. Your sanctification. And what's the last one? Your deliverance. Your redemption. Your deliverance. So notice, he, Jesus is your wisdom, so that means God is guiding you. He's what? He's your righteousness, you have right standing with God. He's your what? Sanctification, that means you're holy. 
And redemption, that means you're delivered or free. Redeem means to buy, you've been bought back, you've been delivered, you're free. That's your new identity, amen? So quit allowing people to put labels on you that, you know, you're worth nothing, you're, you're, you don't have any value, you were born on the wrong side of the tracks. Come on. I'm, I live close to the tracks, and man, it's noisy. Amen? Are you seeing that? So that's, number one, what did we learn from Moses? He chose his true identity, even though... That means I have to let go of the world. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Number two, look at the, let's go to verse now 25. Hebrews 11, verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. Moses what? By faith chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Now how, many, how many know sin can be pleasurable? Oh no, pastor. It's not, not, stop lying. Stop lying. Sin is pleasurable, right? Amen? Oh, no, 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 I don't. No more. <laughs> Tired of waking up on the floor. No, thank you, please. It only makes me sneeze. Then I can't even find the door. Amen? No. <laughs> you know, sin can be pleasurable, right? But the thing about sin is that it's pleasurable for only a season. It does not last. And then you're like, man... Why did I eat the hochalupa? Why did I eat the box of C's candy chocolate? Amen? Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's pleasurable. You eat ding-dongs, but man, by the time you're like, you look like a ding-dong. Right? And so notice though, write this down. Number two, he chose God's path of suffering. Listen, some people like to use the word suffering but I'm, I'm not talking about suffering. God doesn't put sickness on you or calamity or disease or anything like that. The suffering I'm talking about is your flesh suffering when you have to say no to your flesh to do God's will. I mean, no, when you say no to your flesh, your flesh is going to suffer a little bit. It's going to cry. I want that You know, whatever it is. Amen? So, so Moses, he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. He knew if I'm going with the people, and look, they're suffering, they're slaves. I choose these people who are suffering to be with them than the passing pleasures of sin. Amen. Why, though? Why? Again, in fact, let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Notice, that's why the scripture says here in 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 15 through 17, don't love the world or the things in the world. Now, now I'm saying, does that mean we don't like things in the world, whatever? He says, don't fall in love with it. Don't fall in love with it. Why? He says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the... Now stop, stay, keep it there, Sally. The love of the Father is not in him. Read this correctly. This does not say that if you love the world... Notice this is, if anyone loves the world, the love... It didn't say love for the Father. It said the love of the Father is not in him. So if you, read it, if you don't read it correctly, then you're thinking that means that, means, uh, that I, I'm not loving the Father enough. No, what he's saying, the love of the Father is not in you. In other words, you do not have a revelation or understand God's love for you. If you did have a full revelation of how much he loves you, guess what? That love for the Father would kick out love for the world. Right? I can tell what you love by your actions. I can tell what you love by what you focus on. Show me where you're spending most of your time, and I'll tell you what you love. Right? And so, so when, you, when you focus on the love of the Father for you, not your love for Him, because listen, you'll never love God the Father. You'll never love Him enough. Come on, let's be honest. Who here really loves the Father God enough? None of us do. So it's not referring to that. It's referring to His love for you. You don't have the love of the Father manifested in you enough that what? It, it, you're, you don't have a love for the world anymore. That's good. That's good, I said, right? Are you seeing that? So, so, but why should we choose God's path? Because the world's path can be enjoyable for a season, but it won't last. Notice the next verse. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. How many know, here's the three basic temptations all the way from Adam and Eve. The lust of the flesh. You know, we want to eat. We know our, what our flesh desires. The lust of the eyes. You know, what we see, what we like. You know, anything can become an idol. Your car can become your idol if you love it more than God, right? And the pride of life. 
Notice, what did Adam and Eve, because the devil tempted them and said, if you'll eat this, you're going to be like God, and you're going to know good and evil. So it's, it's the knowledge of, hey, I can do this. I can become like God. I, can do, I don't need God in my life. In fact, I can run my own life. I'm the God of my life. I'm the Lord of my life. I, can, I did it in my, you know, the famous uh, worldly song. I did it my way. Yeah, I went through this, that, and that, that, but I can say this. I did it my way, Jose, right? I did it the way that I wanted to do it. But are you seeing that? And then the next verse says, though, it is, this is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world is what? Here's the problem with the world, though. The world is passing away and the lust of it. So whatever you see that the world's craving and whatever, it's all going to pass away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. I don't know about you. I'm looking for my mansion in the sky. I'm not looking for what this world... Listen, some of you, I've said in the first service too, some of you have a retirement and, and you have a big nest egg, but you don't even use it. What's going to happen if you, don't, you die and you don't even use any of your retirement? Well, the kids are going to get it. Well, why, why are you going to do that for? <laughs> Amen? Live it up! No, just kidding. Use, use, you know what I'm saying? You have it for a reason. Or if you don't want to use it, sow it in the kingdom of God. You're not going to take it with you. Come on. See what I'm saying? Don't put all your marbles in the world because the world is passing away and it ain't going to last. Amen? It's passing away. Are you seeing that? Now, let's move on to the next one. Go to verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 26. And we're going to, uh, this is number three. So number two was he chose God's path of suffering. Number three, notice, esteeming, he what? He esteemed the reproach of Christ, greater riches, than the treasures in Egypt. Why? Because he looked to the reward. So write this down in your notes, number three. He chose God's reward instead of what the devil offers and what the world offers. Notice, he chose, God's reward is so much greater than what the world has to offer. You can get houses, buildings, whatever in this world, and you might feel, and you know what, when you do, I've heard of people that have multi-million dollar homes and all the trinkets that the world has to offer and yet they're depressed they're down some of their kids are committing suicide what's wrong with that things in this world don't fully satisfy only a relationship with god and being at peace with god is what satisfies amen snickers does not come close amen only a relationship with god Listen, when you can go to bed at night and you know you're at peace with God, amen, you didn't get in an argument with your spouse, everything's a-okay, you can sleep like a baby. The Bible says he gives his beloved sleep. You can't put money on that price tag of going to bed every night and you know, hey, no matter what's happening all around me, I'm at peace with God, I'm a-okay, and you can sleep like, you have seen those pictures of the baby sleeping with a smile? He just had his milk, and you're like, Mama. And you're, mamon. That's what I used to be, a mamon. I used to like the bottle. I had the bottle till I was six or something. I forgot what it was. I come home from kindergarten, Mommy, quiero la botella. Okay, I feel better now. Amen. I like the bottle, man. Don't take the bottle away from me. Wow, Pastor. We learned something new today. <laughs> See, Moses was able to choose God's reward as a better deal. Why? By realizing that even the shame of following Christ was a greater riches than the treasures of the world or Egypt. Look, you might be shamed because you're a believer. People might make fun of you because you're a believer. But guess what? The treasures that God has for you are so much greater, it won't bother you. Come on now. It won't bother you. And what the world calls foolish and shameful, God says, that's, you're smart. And look at, look at these scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's go to verse 27. But God has chosen what? The foolish things of the world. Do you feel foolish sometimes? But guess what? God chose you. Glory to God. Amen. Why? To put to shame the wise. See, the world thinks it's so wise. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. This rock that you see was made over 40 million years ago. Dude, you're only 45, and you think that rock is 40 million? You don't know what you're talking about. My Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. 
if I, if I know, that, that's all I need to know. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's all I need to know. All this other stuff of billions and billions years ago, and you're only 35 years old and you're telling me this? I don't think I believe you. I'd rather believe God's word that's been around for 3,000 years and is still the, the test of time, and you're only 45 years old and you think you know that all this happened. Oh yeah, that's carbon dated. It's, it's been 5 million years ago. Shut up! Oh no, we came from the monkeys. I know my cousins look like monkeys, but that's not true. I know. They act like apes, the planet of the apes over there in my house sometimes. <laughs> Cochinos. Clean up your things. You're acting like monkeys in here. Right? Let's keep reading. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God's chosen the weak. Do you feel weak sometimes as a Christian? He chose you, the weak things of the world, to put to shame the things which are considered mighty in the world. Next verse. And the base things, you feel low, base. Base things, meaning we're not, feel like you're not worth it. Amen? 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 And you try to build up your self-esteem by listening to that commercial, Ooh, baby, I'm a worth it. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You're already worth in Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Things which are despised, God, notice, you feel despised sometimes? Looked down on by, by people? Well, God's chosen you, why? And the things which are not, you feel like a nothing? <laughs> things that are not. Do you feel like nothing? Well, guess what? To bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in us. See, nobody, nobody can take credit for what God does. Nobody can take credit for what he does. And then Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 through 14. Here we see Jesus. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood or make him holy. He suffered what? Outside the gate. What do you mean? Out in the world, in other words. He suffered. Think about Jesus, the shame that he bore on the cross practically naked, and people making fun of him, right? Think about that. Next verse uh, of that, uh, verse uh, 13, I think. Therefore, let us do the same thing like Jesus. Go forth to him outside the camp, bearing what? His reproach. Are you ashamed to, to tell people you're a Christian? Are you ashamed to tell people you're a believer? You shouldn't be. We should bear our own, in other words, they might make fun of us, but we shouldn't. Let's be like Jesus, and let's go outside too, and not be ashamed to stand up for him. Moses had to make that choice. Man, I'm stepping down from royalty to slavery. Yet he chose that path. Why? Because he looked what, to the reward that he had that would be greater for him. Amen? In fact, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I love this verse. For I consider that the sufferings of, the pre of this present... Anybody going through some sufferings right now? The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Woo, glory to God. I don't know what you're going through right now, but whatever it is you're facing, with people making fun of you, or you're going through an ordeal that's a major ordeal, guess what? He, Paul's saying, what allowed Paul to put up with stuff is because he would compare what he's going through with God's glory revealed in him. Think about God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is your hope of glory. Amen? No matter, I don't know about you, I've had some days where I'm just driving down the road and think about maybe certain problems that are going on, situations that are going on, but then I look up at the sky and I see the clouds and I see the, the white tank mountains because I'm driving down Thunderbird or whatever, and I'm like, except I'm starting not to see it anymore with all these warehouses going on right here. I'm like, I'm losing Mountain View here. Anyway, but, but I'm, 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 I'm driving and everything and I'm thinking about, man, I am so glad I'm saved. Even if something were to happen to me today, whatever, I know where I'm going. Even if the whole world implodes around me, I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to be with God. One day Jesus is coming soon. I'm going to see him face to face. Amen. It's like the story I heard of, a, of, of somebody that was working in the fields. You know, I don't know if it was the green onions or whatever. And, and all of a sudden he starts shouting, Hallelujah, glory to God. What's wrong with you? You're working in the mud and whatever. Why? Because I, I started thinking about the streets of gold that I'm going to be walking on and not this mud Amen. come on now see it's perspective Amen. if you change your perspective it'll it, you'll be able to run your race and be able to handle the stuff that's hitting you he chose to look at his reward and it, that kept him going forward so why he was looking at the price amen let's keep reading next part of that verse 
For the earnest expectation of the creation, even creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the... Even creation is saying, where are the sons of God? Where are the sons and daughters of God? We're waiting for them. When are they going to show up? See, the creation can't tell right now because we're born again, but they can't see our spirits. But notice the next verse. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, through, in other words, through Adam and Eve, but because of him who subjected it in hope. But look at verse uh, 21. Because the creation itself also be with... Listen, when Jesus comes back and, we go and, and the world goes through the tribulation and we're in heaven with him, after that when he comes back in the new millennium, what, what, everything's going to be restored. Notice, what, because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into what? Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen? Notice, we have glorious liberty. That's our freedom. And guess what? Creation is going to be delivered too. Amen? Amen? The monkeys are going to start acting right now. Amen? The apes and every, everybody's going to start acting better. Amen? Number four, let's go back to Hebrews 11, verse 27. We're learning what can we learn from the race set before Moses, how he ran his race. So we learned that he chose his true identity. He chose God's path of suffering. He chose God's reward. He kept his eyes on the reward instead of the shame. Now number four, let's go to verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is what? Invisible. Again, notice he's keeping his eyes on what his eyes can't see. I remember when I first got saved back in 1982. Oh my God, I was so in love with Jesus, and I still am, but you know, that freshness and everything. And because I, I would drive all the way down to Glendale because that's where my church was on 59th and by 59th and Glendale at Word of Life. Uh, it, was, it was a Word of Faith church, and it was on the radio. And so, my, my, one of the ladies from uh, one of my sponsors from high school, I told her that I was saved, I got saved, and she's the one that invited me to the church. And so, every, I would drive down Grand Avenue, you know, every every weekend and every Wednesday to go to church. And they had Sunday service too. So I remember I was so, man, my eyes were so focused on Jesus. I'm driving and I'm just, I'm like, see Jesus sitting on the throne right in front of me. I'm thinking about him. But sometimes then I got baptized and the Holy Spirit started speaking in the Spirit. And man, that even, another thing, amen. So I'm driving down the road and as I'm praying in the Spirit, I, I tend to push the gas pedal more. And, so, and I started speeding. But I could see like Jesus. I could see him with my mind's eye. I saw him before him as I'm worshiping him and thanking him. And I know some people would tell me, oh, Manuel, we saw you, but you weren't paying attention. You were like, <laughs> I was like in La La Land or something. My eyes were, on, I was praying in the spirit. My eyes were on Jesus. Amen. Did you know, and you notice when my eyes were on Jesus, because remember, I came out of pornography and stuff. And when my eyes on, were on Jesus, I had less trouble with it. It's when I got my eyes off of him then I would struggle sometimes. So you have to what? You have to keep your eyes on him. You have to stay focused on him. And so, and so notice, uh, uh, he chose, I write this down, number four. Did I give you number three? He, he chose God's reward. Number four, he chose to leave the world behind. Write that down. He chose to leave the world behind. But listen, to leave the world behind, how are you going to do it? Proverbs 29, 25, you cannot fear man Notice he said, not fearing the wrath of the king. If you're going to leave the world behind, you can't have a fear of man. Notice Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man is a trap or a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Are you seeing that? You cannot, listen, if you're afraid to step out because you fear man, you won't step out. You'll stop running your race. You can't fear what people think of you. You can't worry about what people think of you. It doesn't matter. They're not your Lord. You're not going to have to answer to them. You're only going to have to answer to the Lord, not to them. Amen? Well, what if they think, who cares? You're not going to stand before them. So don't get into fear of man because it's a trap. Amen? Moses didn't fear the king, so he left. Listen, what, what other part? You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. How I many know you might be not be able to see Jesus right now physically but you can see him by faith like I was when I was driving down the road amen I saw him through my eyes of faith and listen when you think of Jesus don't think of Jesus as the earthly Jesus that you saw in fact when we're worshiping here during praise and worship don't think of Jesus as the earthly Jesus that you saw he's no longer like that if you want to see how Jesus looks today read Revelation chapter 1 his eyes are like a flame of fire. His hair is white like wool. His, his, his fire, feet are like brass, uh, fire to brass. 
He's got a, you know, a, 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 a breastplate of right, you know, be- he's, he looks amazing. Better than Fabio. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With his hair, you know what I'm saying? And the Bible says this, face sun, shines like the sun in its strength. That's how Jesus is in his glory right now. He's not the earthly Jesus that he was. Why? Because he got resurrected with his glorified body. Mm. So when you're worshiping Jesus, when you're thinking about him, don't think about him just like just the earthly Jesus. No, think about him in his resurrected form and the way he is. Amen. I remember one time Brother Hagen had seen Jesus, had a vision of Jesus, and that when he looked into his eyes, he says there were like wells of love coming forth, reaching to me. Because why? God is love. Amen? So notice 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, talking about how he chose to leave the world behind by what? Not fearing man and keeping his eyes on Jesus. Notice. Therefore, we do... And do you have it in the NLT too? Go, go ahead and put for time's sake. Let's go ahead and just go to the NLT. This is why we never give up. Come on now. Hallelujah. Though our bodies are dying. How many know our bodies are starting to get older? Man, I don't know what happened. I remember back in the 80s, I was so young. Amen. This is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being what? Renewed every day. Thank God. You may, you may be getting older on the outside, but guess what? You're newer and newer on the inside. Amen. That's why some people don't understand. You might feel old on the outside, but in the inside, you still feel like a child. Right? You love to do fun things and whatever. Why? It doesn't change, man. Amen. Right? Verse 16. That's why we never give up, though our bodies are... Do, next verse, verse, for our present troubles. Anybody going through present troubles right now? Come on, anybody? Am I the only one? For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Again, perspective, perspective. He's looking at his troubles compared to eternity, compared to what God is bringing forth out of him. Our present troubles are small. I think the message says they're small potatoes are small and won't last very long. Ooh, that's good news. I don't know what you're going through right now, but guess what? It ain't going to last forever. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Only God's love for you. I'm going to love you forever, forever and ever. Amen? (laughs) Only God's love will last forever. Amen? Yet, listen, they produce for us what? What you're going through right now, God can turn it around for good. They will produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs what? What you're going through. Them and will last forever. Woo, glory to God. Amen? You'll come out stronger. You'll come out determined. You'll come out fighting and and, and, and determined to do God's will for your life, no matter what you're facing. Amen? There's times where I have to do that, and I'll say, no, uh, I'm, I don't care how I feel right now, I'm committed to living and doing. Because sometimes when you get down or depressed, you feel a little bit whatever, it's almost you want to quit on life too, you know what I'm saying? But that's why it's no, I speak to myself, or I speak to the devil, or whatever, wherever it's come, or to the Lord, thank you, Lord, I'm committed to living, and not just living, but doing God's will, no matter what. Why? No matter what. You know why? Because I love him because he first loved me. It isn't for no reason. It's because I love him because he first loved me. Amen? And so you have to make a determination. I am going to do God's will no matter what. Amen? So notice, uh, uh, did we finish that? Let's keep reading the last part of it or no? Or do we? Yeah. So listen, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Come on. Don't look at your troubles. See, if you keep your eyes on your troubles... Guess what? You're going to end up feeling down, depressed, and stay in the trouble. You have to look away from the trouble to what? To the prize. Listen. So we so no listen. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. See, don't look at the troubles you're going through right now. Rather, we fix our gaze. You know what gaze means? Oh. You know see how people look like you're looking at something intently? Amen. Some of you guys, when you first fell in love, you know what I'm talking about. Those googly eyes. <laughs> so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on what? Things that cannot... See, what are you supposed to look at? At what you can't see. You might not see your answer right now, but you're supposed to keep looking at, in other words, at that answer, Jesus. Or you might be believing God for healing, but you keep seeing the healing manifest. Come on. 
you keep seeing what it is you're believing for. See what I'm saying? Or, or you know, keep your eyes on the Lord. Listen, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. So in other words, the Bible says, in, in, in I think it's uh, Colossians 3, you know, where set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? Because you died. What do you mean me? The old you died. And your life is hidden with Christ and God. Amen? So set your mind on things above, not on the earth. Amen? Why? Because we're, we're, we're supposed to be, in other words, we're supposed to be heavenly minded. Have you heard the people that say, well, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. No, I say it the opposite. You're so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good. You're so focused on the world that you're no good to the kingdom of God. Let's finish that. Let's finish that uh, where we were. Or did we finish it? Oh, no. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see will now be soon gone. See, that's what I'm saying, people. If you focus on the world and the things of the world, they're coming to an end. How many know it looks like it's coming to an end? But the things that cannot, we cannot see will last what? Forever. The Word of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the joy of God, who you are in Christ. You can't see your spirit now, but man, if you could see into the spirit, you would look, man, how amazing you are. You're a new creation in Christ. Are you seeing that? Let's move on. Number five, and this is chapter 11, verse 28. Here's the next. We got two more and we'll be done. Uh, I got a brother over there telling me I need to be done by before one because he wants to go see the Kansas City Chiefs play. Although I think the Ravens are probably going to take it, but anyway. But uh. Listen, so verse 28, look at this. By faith, what did Moses do? He kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should what? Touch them. You know what this means here? Write this down, number five. He chose to do God's will. He chose to do God's will. What does the Passover and the sprinkling of blood mean for us today remember what are they what happened when when God told Moses I want you to get a lamb and what kill it by the door of your house take the blood and anoint the you know the lentils and so forth and the doorpost and when the death angel comes that firstborn son that's in the house will not die but where the blood's not applied he will die so the angel came and he what? Passed over. Well, guess what? It's talking about our what? What Jesus, his, his death, burial, resurrection did for us. Why? Why? The doorpost is the cross. And what was applied on the cross? Jesus' blood was applied on the cross. And when you come to the cross, guess what? You get saved. And guess what? The death angel passes over you. You go from death unto life. So it's all a picture. So what are we learning here then? In other words, by faith, you need to exercise your authority of what Jesus did for you in his death, burial, and resurrection. Why? If you don't apply the blood, in other words, if you don't, if you don't uh, uh, take authority with the, what Jesus already accomplished for you, then guess what? You can be touched with sickness. You can be touched with... Notice, notice the death angel couldn't touch them. Why? Because they were passed over. Why? Because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the type and shadow of the lamb. And, and check it out. You know what they did? After they killed the lamb at the doorpost, you know what they did? They went inside the house and ate lamb. You notice how we're taking communion every Sunday? You know what you're doing? You're doing that type and figure. You're eating the lamb. You're eating the bread. That's what they did. And guess what? The next day when they left, they said there was not one feeble among them. In other words, everybody got strengthened and healthy by eating the lamb amen i take communion every day except sunday because i take it twice here but every day in my house I, i've made it uh, uh, it's not i don't do it religiously i do it I, I, god dealt with me i i, I learned it I, when i heard uh, joseph prince talk about it and and other people and all of a sudden miracles started happening people started getting healed and i and, and it, god dealt with me for that to do that too and i've been doing it for years now and that's how it helps me i get over colds and stuff quickly and everything why i take communion every day I get up after I read my word, then I go take my communion. I, yeah, if I don't have, I just get water, a little cracker that I buy these little crackers, and I take my communion. And I remind my body that I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. So every day, what am I doing? I'm applying. I'm applying, exercising my faith, believing. See, and that's by faith. Moses did that when God told him, apply the blood, eat the lamb, and then what? Their deliverance came the next day. Whew. 
Why do you think Jesus, when he fed the 5,000, he took the bread and he what? Broke it. He was thinking about that. I'm the bread that's broken. You need a miracle in your life? Take the bread and break it. Oh, when, you, when you think about Jesus and his finished work, that's why you get your miracle, because of Jesus, not because of anything you do. He fed 5,000 that day when he broke bread. Are you seeing that? Amen? So uh, that's what it means. You need to enforce by faith what Jesus already accomplished for you. Now, number six. Go to verse 29. Hebrews eleven twenty-nine. 29. Number six. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Now, this is a very interesting verse. I want you to write this number six. He chose to walk by faith. And really, the whole chapter of Hebrews is about walking by faith in the race that God has set before us. It's a race of faith we're in. You got, in other words, if you don't feel like walking, you get up and you still walk. If you don't feel like running your race, you get up and you still, by faith, you don't have to feel it to walk it. You don't have to feel it to run it. Are you seeing that? See, that's why we were taught faith. If, you're, if you don't feel it, you still walk it. You still talk it. You still run. Come on. Moses was obedient to God's word spoken to him. He just had to, what, trust God no matter the fact that a sea was before him and Pharaoh's army was behind him. God just told him to, what, stretch out his rod and what? And he did it and God did it too. Amen? So in other words, in fact, go ahead and go to Exodus 14, 10. Here's the point. Here's the point. You have to step out in faith to do what God told you to do. Come on. Now, did you notice did you notice that the Pharaoh and his army, they walked into the what? Into the Red Sea too? Now, did God tell them to do that? Come on. Did he? No. Listen, here's where people get mixed up on faith. faith if God shows you something and tells you to do something and you have the faith, he's showing you, then good, step out and do it. But Pharaoh thought, oh, they're able to walk, you know, through the Red Sea, whatever. I guess we could do that too. That's like some Christians that say, you know, some brother was led by the Lord to donate, to give their car to somebody else, right? And then God blesses them with a brand new, greater car. And so a Christian, oh, if he did that, I can do the same thing. And so that other Christian gives his car away, and there we see him walking down the road. <laughs> Why? Did God, tell you to, did God tell you to give your car? No, but brother so-and-so gave his car, and God blessed him with a greater car. That's presumption. That, you don't have the faith to give that car. Did God tell you to do that? No. But see, that's what Pharaoh did. God didn't tell him to get into the sea. He's thinking, well, they did it. That was, that was presumption. That was pretty dumb. Come on. See what I'm saying? That's where people get mixed up in faith. Well, I saw so-and-so did that. If it worked for them, it worked. Well, did God tell you to do that? No, but it worked for them. But now if God deals with you to do the same thing, God dealt with me to be taking communion every day, so I do it. Now, if God hasn't dealt with you with that, that's fine. But if he deals with you, do it. See what I'm saying? Because otherwise, if you're taking communion and, and you're just like doing it, just like a ritual or whatever, okay, I did my communion for the day. We'll get here. Don't be like the children of Israel that despise the manna, the bread. Oh, it's just, oh, I'm tired of taking communion. No, I take it because, as, as this is my time to remind myself and my body who I am, and, you know, what Jesus did for me, and remind myself that I'm free from all sin and bondage. When I take the cup, I remind myself I'm free from all bondage of my past. I'm See, it's a reminder. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. See what I'm saying? So, so are you seeing that? Uh, don't, sometimes people think they're in faith, but God didn't tell them to do that. And that's why things don't happen. And they wonder, see, it doesn't work. I trusted God and it didn't happen. Come on. Look at Exodus 14, 10 through 14. I'm almost done. I'm trying to close here. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. So man, here comes the army of Pharaoh. Next verse. Then they said to Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? In other words, they, they, look at this. They want to go back to the world. Is, is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Why would you want to go back and serve the world? For it would have been better for us to serve the world or the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. See, when you're going through a trial, you think, man, is this worth it? Some Christians, just because things you go through troubles, they want to quit running the race. They want to give up running the race. No! 
Don't go to, about it, Pastor, I had it better when I was. No, you didn't. The world, the, the, you didn't have it better when you were in the world. You were throwing all, all messed up, tore up from the floor up. Come on. You were messed up, like, you know what I'm saying? You were lost. You were on your way to hell. Just because you're going through some troubles as a Christian, now you want to quit and give up? No. Let's keep reading. Where, uh, next verse, or did we read it? Say it. And Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. We just sang about it. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Stand still. That's faith right there. Relax. Rest in God. Stand still and see the salvation. Of the Lord. This is a good word for you this morning. Don't be afraid. Stand still. Walk by faith and see God's deliverance in your situation. God's healing in your situation. The provision you need. See God's provision coming to you in your situation. Whatever it is that you need, what? Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Come on now. For the Egyptians or the, the world whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Whatever trouble you're going through, do right, guess what? Very soon, you're not going to see it anymore. Glory to God. Can anybody say amen? I'm not going to see that. I'm not going to have that trouble anymore. I'm going to be set free from that trouble. Glory to God. I'm going to be delivered from that trouble. See it. See yourself already. And notice. And, and, and notice. Was that it? I think. Oh, yeah. Go to 14. The Lord. Here's the other good thing. Listen. You're going to rest and the Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. See, there's sometimes where we're trying so hard to believe God for something. When sometimes we just need to what? Put it on the altar. Give it to God. And let him deal with it. Yes. Come on. Rest. And God does the fighting for you. You're resting and God is fighting. When before you were the fighting one. I was like, what am I going to do here? But instead you said, no. Stop it. Stand still. And I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to trust him. Come on now. Now let's go down to verse 21, 22. If you have that on the next part of Hebrews I mean, I mean, Exodus. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Everybody seen the Ten Commandments movie. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into what? A dry land, and the waters were divided. Verse 22. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on the right hand and on the left. And the Egyptians, notice, did God tell them to go in? No. Nope pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and all his horsemen. And you know what happened? The water, after the children of Israel left, the water came down and drowned them all. Now, go to verse 30, 31. Uh, the next, the last part there. In, so the Lord, what did he do? He saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Verse 31, finally, thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord his, and his servant Moses. So they got the victory. Now, so I want to end with these scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The Bible says we are supposed to walk by what? Faith and not by sight. So that means you're not going to be moved by what you see. You're going to be moved by what you believe. Right? Now, I'm going to look at this scripture in the message, and it's going to be verses uh, 6 through 8, if you have that. That's why we live, what? With such good cheer. Come on now. Amen. You won't see us dro drooping our heads or dragging our feet. See, in this race, we shouldn't be like this. Nobody knows and all that other stuff, you know, what I'm going through. No. You won't see us drooping our he heads and dragging our feet. Cramped conditions here don't get us down. Come on now. They're, they only remind us of the spacious living conditions ahead. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, Jesus said, I, I'm, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. He's, he, he's, he's, he's making a mansion for you. Spacious living. Amen? Over there, we're not going to have little small houses. Come on. I know we got a, a small house revolution going on. Not in heaven. It's a mansion. Amen? It's a mansion. You can yell, and you won't hurt... You won't, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're far enough. Amen? Here, you're so close in the houses or whatever. My God, you can't even do, you know, burp or anything because the neighbors are going to hear. Amen? You won't see us drooping. Listen, listen. They only remind us of the spacious living conditions ahead. I wasn't thinking that you were. I was thinking of it. I, I lied. You can't even toot because somebody else will hear it, you know? It's what we trust in, but 
you go to the window and there's your neighbor. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> this is they only remind us of the spacious living in his head. It's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. Listen, it's what we trust in but don't see that keeps us. Keep your eyes on what you don't see. Keep your eyes on the gold medal. The runner keeps thinking. The, the, the runner doesn't have the medal in front of him, but he sees it by faith. He's seen him stepping up to the podium and the gold medal being placed on him. He sees it in his mind's eye, and that keeps him going. The same way, you may not yet seen your healing, but see yourself healed see yourself prosperous see yourself delivered see yourself free see yourself the way God sees you you're believing God for a ministry whatever see yourself doing what God wants you to do and then you'll see the result eventually amen are you seeing that let's finish it up do you suppose a few ruts in the road or rocks in the path are going to stop us come on have you hit some rocks in the road? Have you, hit, have you stumbled? When the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile for homecoming. Come on now. See, we're waiting for the day. So as you run this race of faith set before you, choose, number one, to know who you are in Christ. Choose, number two, to choose, God, to choose God's path of suffering for his sake. And by faith, number three, choose God's reward, not the world's false treasures. Number four, choose to leave the world behind. Number five, choose to do God's will. Enforce the authority you have as a believer. And number five, choose to walk and run this race you're in by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Father, thank you so much. I'm going to open up the front. If you need prayer this morning, you want somebody to agree with you or pray with you, you need healing in your body, or you just want, you just want to be encouraged, strengthened in this race that you're running, and, 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 and to do some of these things we're talking about here, I want you to come on up and, and we have prayer people that are going to pray with you and stand with you as, as we begin to sing here in a little bit. So if that's you, you need prayer this morning. Listen, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, and especially, look, any, especially if you're, you're, you're at a point where, man, you, you're thinking of quitting, don't do it. Come up and get prayer. Come up and receive prayer, amen. Come up and receive what you need this morning. Don't allow the enemy to, to cause you to stop burning your aid. If you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling weary, please come up and get prayer this morning. Come on. Come on up as they sing. Come on. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, my Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father God. We magnify you and we give you praise, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father God. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, Father God. And Father, I pray for those here that are here for our people, Lord God. Anybody here that's thinking of giving up, that you would strengthen their hearts right now. Strengthen their soul. Strengthen their mind. Strengthen their body. Quicken them in their inner man that they would not quit running their race. Lead them and guide them by your spirit on what their next steps are. Give them a desire to seek you, to seek your wisdom and your guidance in the name of Jesus. Lord, perfect the things, perfect the things that concern everyone here in the sound of my voice and those that are watching. I want you to say this, Heavenly Father, say it with me, come on. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Not my will, but your will be done. I don't want to run my race. I want to run the race that you've set before me. Help me, Lord, to always choose your path, to not go the way of the world, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help me to keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I trust in you I refuse to fear man. And by faith, I will do your will for my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, if you agree with that. Anybody else need a prayer? Go ahead, brother. You want to do a course? Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship God a little bit. Let it be a man. 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 Let
Just worship him a little longer. And we'll dismiss it just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Oh, oh we worship you, Jesus. We magnify you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Is Sing the chorus one more time, then we're going to dismiss. Let's sing that one more time. Holy Spirit. One more time, we'll dismiss it. You'll dismiss right after that. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come fill this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your Oh, 